So not only was it a miserable week being sick to my stomach, there was literally nothing I could do on show day to reverse the negative effects from the week. But here's the thing. There was no science that backed this peak week protocol. And not only was the week of show memorable in not a good way, eight months of hard work got thrown down the drain because I did not bring my best physique to the stage. What a waste. Is bodybuilding about selfies, steroids, magazines, and muscles? How do I become a successful pro bodybuilder or fitness competitor? Where do I even start if I'm new? And the biggest question of all, what are the judges looking for anyway? Even today with the internet, many people first discover bodybuilding by word of mouth. The lack of regulation has caused a boom of unqualified coaches, scattered info, biased advice, dangerous protocols, and posing trends that are a hot mess. After 20 years in the business, I have seen it all. Week after week, I'm going to talk about taboo topics that get swept under the rug, provide you tips and strategies to gain a competitive edge and stand out on stage in any division or federation. I'm going to answer all the burning industry questions without the bias. I have competed across six federations, earned pro status in three, and judged in two. I've coached posing and choreography for men and women in all federations and divisions. I know just how much competing means to you. I'm your host, Michelle Welcome, and you are listening to the Everything Else in Bodybuilding podcast. Be sure to download your free guide, Five Things Every Bodybuilder and Fitness Competitor Needs to Know Before Your Next Show at eeandbb.com. That's www.eeinbb.com. The week before your bodybuilding competition is exciting. You will feel a flood of emotions. You might feel a sense of accomplishment that all your hard work has finally got you to the point of getting on stage. You made it. You might also be a nervous Ned or a nervous Nelly and completely doubt yourself and whether you are ready at all. These are all fears and false beliefs, of course. I've had to talk sense into some posing clients in the past here or there who start pulling the only skin they have left on the sides of their waist and telling me to look at this. Can you see my eyes rolling right now? It's the same look I give them. I'm like, yes, you are contorting your body to make skin squeezable. Of course, I'm being silly sarcastic to them like I always do. And I do stop joking and level with them. I remind them of the road, where they started, where they are now, and that now is the time to put their game face on. It's been a long road and now is not the time to take their eye off the ball. How do I know this? Because I've been there, done that many times myself, and I have experienced a high like you will never believe when I got on stage and knew I nailed the look. And then I've also got on stage and knew the opposite and walked off stage knowing I looked better a week before the show. This is exactly what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about some of my own experiences with Peak Week and share in detail how they can go very wrong. Now, if you don't know what Peak Week is, it refers to the final week before a bodybuilding contest when many people make last minute tweaks to their nutrition and our training to try to get their body just a little leaner or tighter or drier. The goal is to make their muscles display that much more prominent on show day. Sounds exciting, right? One time I prepared eight months for a show only for a peak week disaster to cause me to miss the mark with my physique on show day. Eight months of work. Think about that. These shows are not like every weekend for most people. If you are constantly trying to improve your physique, it's in your best interest that you not compete very often. So you have the time to actually make the improvements. If you're on PEDs, you're a different breed, and that's a topic for another day. So in addition to the eight months of work, there were financial costs that were wasted. I had to fly for this show, so there was flight, hotel, rental car, and of course the entry fees, the TAN, among other things that had to be factored in as well. And you'll hear me say it many times, competing in bodybuilding is not an inexpensive sport. I had no problem spending this money for something I loved, but to spend it and my physique look worse than it looked literally one week before, it's a tough one to swallow when I didn't know how long it was going to be before I got back on stage. So what happened? For the eight months leading up to the show, I was drinking two meal replacement shakes a day and found them very easy on the stomach. They gave me a lot of energy for my workouts too. Plus they had 36 grams of protein, who doesn't love that? Plus essential vitamins and enzymes to break down the shakes for better absorption. So they were a powerhouse of nutrition. The shakes were the only things I made change to my nutrition. The only change I made, I worked them into my macros 
and ate the same amount of meals a day, just swapped out two of them for shakes. Visibly, my shoulders were growing like weeds, energy was great, and the biggest benefit I found was I had no problem staying lean throughout the year. I didn't have any cravings either. I had them in my nutrition, the shakes that is all the way up to the final week of show. Then peak week came around. I was advised to pull out my two shakes and swap them for solid food. The theory was it would dry me out and I would come in looking leaner and my muscles more prominent at my show the following Saturday. You're probably guessing by now that this did not happen. So let me tell you what did happen. At first, the thought of removing my shakes, I was like, oh, bummer. Everything has been so, going so well. Very quickly, I switched my attitude to that of, well, if this is what it's going to take to come in my best, then let's do it. I never backed down from putting the work in to make me a champion. Plus, I was making my pro debut on a new pro stage, and I wanted to win. This pro stage was different than other stages I had been on. From the posing, the judging, the scoring literally was different. The stage walks, basically everything was different. I think you all know by now I have three pro cards in three very different federations. I mean, some people may say they have two or three pro cards, but often that is in the same federation. So, for example, they might be a figure bodybuilding and physique pro, or a bikini and figure pro, but it's all in the same federation or among very similar federations. So it's a very similar feel all around. But when you cross over to a completely different federation with completely different judging, posing requirements, things like that, you're in completely new waters. And the overall experience is going to be completely new. Good or bad, just stating the obvious here that it's going to be a new if you're in a completely different environment. So here I was getting ready for this new pro stage, excited for a new experience, and I'm one week out from the show. I pull the shakes as recommended and swap the shake meals for salad proteins. At the end of day one, my stomach felt full from all the salad food, but I figured it would pass since I was also doing additional cardio. I hoped the cardio would help me utilize the food better. I was very optimistic day one. By midday day two, it became more difficult to get the food down. I wasn't hungry and my stomach felt full all the way up to that spot underneath my breastbone. I still got my food in, though. By the evening of day two, my stomach started to physically hurt. The morning of day three, I was battling being able to eat at all. By lunchtime day three, I could not eat any more solid food. My stomach felt full to the brim, hurt quite a bit, and I felt like I was going to vomit if I ate any more. I struggled getting through my workouts, too. So I skipped a meal or two and ate a lighter meal at the end of the day with maybe about three ounces of protein and a tablespoon of some fat. By day four, which is the Thursday before the Saturday show, I added back in just a plain whey protein shake, not a meal replacement, to at least get some protein in. And I did the same on Friday, too. By Friday, the pain had subsided, but I still wasn't 100% well. Plus, by now, the effect of the nutrition changes was visible, and not in a good way. My body was stressed. The cuts that were in my legs the weekend before were soft, and I did not have the prominent muscular look that we hoped for. The resulting changes to my physique were completely opposite of what was the goal of peak week. So not only was it a miserable week being sick to my stomach, there was literally nothing I could do on show day to reverse the negative effects from the week. But here's the thing. There was no science that backed this peak week protocol. And not only was the week of show memorable in not a good way, eight months of hard work got thrown down the drain because I did not bring my best physique to the stage. What a waste. Kind of like when someone shows up unprepared with their hair, makeup, suit, or posing in stage presence skills and looks like a hot mess on stage when they could have avoided it. Such a waste. At least with proper hair, makeup, and posing and stage presence preparation, you can control looking prepared. That's up to you. You can just redo your hair, for example. Like, don't like the hair? Redo it right on the spot. There's no second chances with the physique. To me, there is so much help in these areas these days that there really is no excuse for being unprepared in any of these areas. With peak week protocols, not so much. Did you know that there is not one exact peak week protocol that works for everyone? The person you're working with, no matter who they are, how many years they have been coaching, or how many degrees he or she has, is still testing their protocols on you to find out what works for you? And don't get me going on these contest prep coaches that literally have the only credential of winning a pro show next to their name, now calling themselves expert coaches. Not just a coach, expert coaches, please. Often there is zero science education behind him or her and most likely no real knowledge of human physiology at all. I know some top level coaches who resort to giving their bikini athletes specific PED protocols 
to minimize their room for error peaking you. They want to minimize their room for error by giving you PED protocols. Think about that. Look, if you're a general wellness and lifestyle person and not looking to do contest prep, by all means, work with the fancy name coaches. When I owned my fitness facility, I would give nutrition consults to the general public that came to my gym to work out. Heck, I even had an entire movement in my community called the Michelle Approved Movement, where I designed healthy menu options at various restaurants and even took it as far as to have a grocery list at a supermarket with about 250 shelf tags throughout the store for shoppers to cross-reference the grocery list. Sales of the menu items and grocery list items, they skyrocketed for these businesses, and I never took a penny from them either. Instead, I wanted people to know that my fitness facility was unlike any other. When I did one-on-one nutrition consults with gym members, I would look at what they were eating and I would make recommendations based on their goals, lifestyle, and always took into account their current nutrition regimens. I have found that a lot of nutrition is about psychology too, so everything was customized to the person and what was doable for them. All the little improvements did in fact help them to improve. I didn't want to be that gym where everyone shows up looking the exact same month after month, year after year, especially when they worked with someone from my personal training staff. You've probably seen this occur yourself at your own gym, people spending thousands of dollars to work with a personal trainer only to look no different. Nope, didn't want that for my gym members. For this reason, anyone that incorporated my nutrition advice transformed. I knew from years of competing that nutrition was an integral part of making physique changes. The exact nutrition changes are specific to the person and where they are in their journey but I currently draw the line at nutrition for contest prep. Even with nutrition certifications I have and continue to acquire, including the latest one I just did called the Flex Diet Certification under Dr. Mike T. Nelson, who I think is one of the smartest people I've ever met, I still won't, as of today, do someone's contest prep nutrition. I will be coming out with a program that is lifestyle related in the near future with my husband, Vasilios, that's gonna address common pitfalls in nutrition and training for like a nominal amount, so nothing crazy and I'll share more about it when the time comes. As for contest prep, as of right now, I refer contest prep nutrition to the smartest people I know who understand its complexity from a science back approach. Instead, my focus is on posing when shows, which is the gold standard in the industry with tools and strategies you're not gonna find anywhere else. That's my program. I can't say enough about it, obviously, because it's a passion of mine. And my point about nutrition for contest prep is that not everyone is qualified to be an expert in it. Tons of likes and followers, a trophy, or a pro win doesn't make someone an expert, especially when it comes to contest prep. So I talked about how not one exact peak week protocol works for everyone, but let me also ask you, did you also know that your body will not necessarily respond the same way to the protocol you did for the show you did prior? I can remember a show where I came in on point. The look was absolutely nailed, and it was another pro debut. I remember being on stage and being in, wait for it, last call out. So I look in my best, and I'm in last call out. I was standing in the back of the stage under the lights with like two other people. What you would consider the best in the group of women on the stage had already been called up to the front of the stage and compared amongst each other while the rest of us stood like potted plants at the back of the stage. I remember that sinking feeling when it was down to like a couple of us and I hadn't been called up yet. I was like, well, no turning back now. When I was finally called up with those two other people, I did not let what I was feeling inside change my presentation. It was time to perform, so step up. This was prejudging. I walked off the stage and was like, okay, well, because I knew I brought my best package to the stage. That was my win. And no one could take that away from me. I didn't wallow in my sorrow and kept my nutrition on point between prejudging and finals so I would continue to hold my conditioning and not lose the look that I worked so hard to achieve. So finals come around. We are all pros, so the MC introduces us individually by our first and last names to the audience. I come out, hit my signature power pose, flash a few more of my best poses, and get back in line. The MC then starts to do callouts again because the judges weren't done finishing. The first batch of people are called out. Nope, not me, as expected. Another few people are called up to stand with them. Nope, not me. I'm still not surprised, though. Then all of a sudden, I hear my name. I'm like, wow, that's an improvement from being last. 
I try to contain my excitement, breathe, and walk up to the line with the rest of the women. Here I am standing at the very end of the row. There's a little bit of a pause in the judging, so I look over to the judging table and I see whispering going on. We're all waiting there for the next call, and to my surprise, I hear my name called, and I'm asked to move all the way to the center of the stage next to last year's champion. What a moment. I walk over, get into my pose, and we go through another round of comparisons with me staying right there on stage, right in the center. It was such a drastic change of events that I'll never forget. You just never know, you guys. When you come in on point, you need to never fall off your game and present yourself your best at all times. I absolutely nailed the look for this show. It wasn't easy. And a couple days before the show, my body dried out so much that my arms would suction at the elbow when I did a lap pull down. My legs looked sick and the quad cuts were deep. So cool. And nope, I never took a diuretic. In fact, I've never taken one. This was literally accomplished all with nutrition. It was literally the best I've ever looked and the worst I've ever felt. It paid off and I walked off stage going from last call out to finishing with a second place trophy behind the champion from the prior year who reclaimed her crown. How cool is that? So the following year, when it was time to get back up on stage, that same stage that is, the idea was to not change anything with regards to peak week. So I followed the exact same protocol that I did the year before to a T. You know what happened? Absolutely nothing. No deep quad cuts, no crazy dryness. That exact same protocol did not work. I was still really lean, but I didn't have that crispness and that deep separation that I had the year before. So again, my body did not respond the same way to the protocol it did for the prior show. This wasn't as obvious as a peak week disaster as the one I told you about where the food was drastically changed, but this is still a fail. I've speculated many times about the why on the cause of this fail. I'm not a scientist, but I believe our bodies are constantly evolving. So my body was literally not the same body it was the year before. Think about it. If you're constantly improving your physique, in theory, you should have an improved package in some way. Maybe you have some more muscle overall, like me. I had accomplished building more size in the year between the shows. Or maybe if you took extra time off and you were successful in making a body composition change, meaning you added muscle to areas that are lacking and or trimmed areas that are overdominant. So overall, you are different. Or maybe it's overall stress too. I had torn a hamstring about eight weeks prior to the show and trained right through the pain. Let's also add in the fact that when you were doing contest prep for a bodybuilding show, you were bringing your body fat levels down much further than just looking hot on the beach. There will come a point when your body literally thinks it's starving. In addition, for women, this can mean a loss of your menstrual cycle because your body fat levels are too low for your body to focus on reproduction. I remember for one show, it took me six months to get my cycle back after a show. Six months, crazy, huh? And I've never used any performance enhancing drugs, so this was purely a loss of menses from low body fat levels and the stress on the body that comes with the territory. Overall, the scenario from the prior show to the current show I was doing wasn't the same. So the moral of this is to not think that there is a cookie cutter peak week protocol that is going to work for every show. Now, if you have a coach that resorts to giving you PEDs like estrogen blockers like Novodex to lean out your legs and glutes, then that's a whole different scenario. So as you can see, contest prep is no easy feat. And what you do the final week before the show can literally throw out the window all that you did to prepare for the months leading up to the show. So in my opinion, For many lessons learned from 20 years of doing this, I do believe that no two show preps are the same, but there should be some common sense involved. I do not believe anything drastic should be done the week of show at all. I think that at the end of the day, if you aren't lean enough and you're trying to do something quick to fix it, you're setting yourself up for disaster. Your body is in a super sensitive condition and even small changes can have a drastic effect. If you aren't lean enough, you should push out the show. There will always be another show. Your stress levels have to be factored in too, and action should be taken to minimize them as well. Your health and wellness should always be a priority. By the way, some contest prep coaches will not dial you into a show with protein shakes in your nutrition and will ask you to pull them out. If you want to pull out protein shakes for whatever reason, in my opinion, I would not do it last minute. I would slowly taper the shakes down over many weeks prior to your show to allow your body to adapt to the changes in nutrition. 
I would also plan to be ready for a show weeks before the show, not torpedoing like you're sliding into home base head first to score the point. I literally mean weeks before. If you want to try any peak week protocols, let them be small changes that you know will have a positive effect on you because you tested them on you, not heard about them from a friend. So it's with this testing that you find out which peak week protocol you should do for this upcoming show. And it is also the time you will find out whether the protocol you did for the prior show will even work this time. This testing should be done weeks prior to the show, so you have time to make adjustments should any tests not have a favorable outcome. Again, be ready weeks before the show so you can test with a contest-ready physique for more accurate results. Even small changes like adjustments to your carbs or fats can make your muscles look flat or full. I've come into shows with my physique on point, and I've come into shows where I was flat as a pancake. A lot of how to do this is backed by science, so don't waste your time with anyone that, that doesn't have a science background or a solid understanding of the human body. Peak week should be small changes, nothing drastic, and you should prepare for this before the show and not do any last minute tests right before you get on stage. So no guessing the week of the show. In fact, I'm going to be having a guest on the show in the near future who, along with four other people that are PhDs and scientists, who together published a paper recently that reviews the current pre-contest peaking protocols that are most commonly used by bodybuilders. This review provides evidence-based recommendations on safe and effective strategies for peak week protocols. We are also going to talk about the differences in peaking someone who only uses nutrition and training to prep for shows versus someone who uses PEDs to prepare for shows. These scenarios are completely different, and I think a lot of people who start with coaches who automatically use PEDs with their clients don't realize that this is not the only way to prep for shows, and that there is a science-based approach to peak week that will optimize your chances of actually peaking when you are not on PEDs. Swapping out liquids to solids the week of show was a bro science protocol. There is just too much bro science in this industry, and it's time to elevate the science. I think you guys are going to love hearing exactly what people with actual scientific background have to say about peak week. I will continue to bring you guys more truth talk from credible people and no bro science or fluff. So stay tuned for the follow up to this episode. I've got a lot more coming. And in the meantime, if you're ready to do something completely awesome for yourself and leave no stone unturned in your show prep, then go to posingwindshows.com and discover the proven strategies to winning a bodybuilding show that you will never learn at any posing class, competitor workshop, or anywhere else and what to do about it. Learn things you won't learn anywhere else and go to posingwindshows.com. Also, like I said before, join the discussion in the Podcast Insiders group if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode. Ever wonder if you are posing correctly for your division? Learn to Pose is dedicated to taking out the guesswork on how to pose for all categories in bodybuilding. Learn five ways you can improve your posing skills in five minutes guaranteed at www.learntopose.com. There are free posing tutorials available for the bikini, figure, and men's physique categories. More on the way for other divisions in bodybuilding. It's free, so go access your free posing tutorial for bikini, figure, or men's physique at learntopose.com.